Hey everybody. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Naked and Famous Dedham Day. I hope you're having a good Naked and Famous Dedham Day. Every day is Naked and Famous Dedham Day. Thanks for joining me here live from Yokohama, Japan. I hope you're doing great wherever you are in the world. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just waking up, so bear with me. It's, uh, it's another day for me. Another rainy day. It's been it's been pretty rainy out here uh, for the last little while. Rainy season is kicking in, and the rain just shows up and leaves as it pleases, or it just rains all day. We'll see what kind of day it is today, but uh, it's already started raining, and uh, just not used to. I'm not used to all day rain, but uh, I, I'm getting used to it. Hello from Denham Town, USA. I, w I wish there was a Denham Town, USA. That would be great. Uh, a city called Denham Town. Howdy, Bayset. Hello from Mississauga, Ontario. Best part of the week. It's my best part of the week. It's the, it's the way I wind down, and, and I know that uh, the weekend is here. By, by hanging out with all my friends here on Instagram Live. So, what's been going on this week? 24-7 Denim said, saw it. NYC said about an hour ago. Sorry, all the... Saw NYC said about an hour ago they went from hundreds to 10 pairs of recycled left. Amazing, yes. The recycled denim is just, has been one of those styles this season that has just flown off the shelf. You know, we've always had success with lighter blue denim options. This one, I, here's my thought on, on the, on the uh, recycled denim. Here's what I think really triggered that one to be very popular. So did I miss the mug of the day? Let's do the mug of the day and then I'll, I'll talk about the recycled denim. Got my McDonald's Canada Fire King mug. So it's a slightly less common variant of the McDonald's Fire King, King mug. Usually it just has a, the little black dot there in the center. But in the Canadian one, you got a little maple leaf there. So McDonald's Canada Fire King coffee mugs. The mug of the day. The mug of the day. So back to why I think the recycled denim was so popular this season. For many years, we've been doing light-colored, lightweight summer denim options and those have always been successful um nothing i mean there's really hasn't been anything that hasn't you know sold well uh, or sold through so the difference between those and the recycled denim is that the recycled denim looks washed it really does look like a stone washed jean and if you're if you want like, I don't know, we don't see a lot of that anymore. And it gave it to me, it just gave off like a real like, you know, 80s nostalgia vibe. Maybe this is just the way I'm seeing it. But I think that the fact that it, it looked very unique, even among lighter colored blue jeans, and I don't think anything's, I, I've never seen anything like that before, not before the recycled denim. So I think that's what it, it triggered a lot of, uh, you know, excitement in the in the in the community so i think that's why it, it, it moves so fast this season's been weird like weird in a good way in the sense that certain styles just it they flew um the brown fox is another good example of a style that is just you know it it, it it's it's very successful very popular um Yeah, I mean, I think I feel I feel uh, I feel blessed for uh, for the success we've had this season, um, and it, it kind of puts a little bit of a monkey wrench in my planning because, you know, I plan these. Th you know, I, 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 the way I plan our inventory, you know, I'm, I, I I I dig I I do deep dives into like sales and our uh, you know an analyzing what what's going on, and uh, yeah, I was uh, I miscalculated, I guess. Um, by, I, I, I should have had more inventory, um, because I know there's some people like, I, I get messages every day from people 
trying to locate items. So we'll uh, we'll have to recalibrate for next season and and make sure that there's there's enough. But you know, I've said in previous streams before that I usually plan out for about two years worth of inventory, and in these cases, two years worth of inventory blew through in just you know not even one season so yeah we'll see we'll see how we'll uh we'll i'll have to recalibrate um it is a good problem it is a good problem um okay let me uh miss uh Merck Sable, 95, writes, I've been waiting for my Mr. Poopy butthole jeans. FedEx flew over my house from Quebec to Tennessee to drive it back to New York. LOL. You know, as... If you're in... If, you're, if, you, if you do a lot of shipping, um, you're, you're looking at, you know, where your packages are and things like that. And it's sometimes really interesting to see how and where your packages end up um but with things like fedex ups there are certain depots across america um and your packages will even if it's closer you know it seems like it would be a more direct route to just send an item from you know point a to point b i guess just the way that they filter all their packages out everything goes from point a to their distribution centers and then distribution centers, they get sent out to, you know, wherever they're supposed to go. Um, I watched a documentary on it and it, it, it made sense as to how they, uh, how they do everything. It has something to do with time zones and, and I don't know. I, I'll have to find the documentary or, or Google it. Like how, how, uh, you know, FedEx or UPS, uh, distribution centers work. Um, you, you'll, you'll find it's quite fascinating, but yeah, it's, it's not uncommon to see, you know, packages end up in a place that is completely, you know, out of the way from where you are to then end up where you are and do it all in time. You know, these guys, you know, they, they I'm sure they know a thing or two about pa shipping a package efficiently. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm waiting for a package. It probably will, it may show up during this live stream from, uh, from HQ with some spring summer 22 samples. And if I get that package during the stream, I'll open it up to show you guys what, uh, what we got in there. But uh, it's amazing how you can get a package from, uh, you know, Canada to Japan in like in three days or less. Even if you wanted it overnight, they could do that, which is really, it's really incredible how that is an option in the, in, in the world we live in. I don't know, maybe I'm just impressed by mundane things, but, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I am, I, shipping does impress me how fast things can get out sometimes. Um, Rhythm Nation writes, Japan shop, open please. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Um, twenty four seven denim writes, Folks should go check out the Tune White Denim by the Lord Almighty's Toronto band a few years ago. Tune White Denim. Check out the tune. Oh, check out the tune, the song. White Denim by the Lord Almighty's. Okay, we'll, we'll have to check that out. White Denim. Speaking of White Denim, the Natural Seed was another popular one this season. And we were doing our weekly meeting with, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, the company meeting. And one of the, the, the comments, one of, uh, you know, the, the New York staff sent our way was, you know, people love the natural seed this season, but, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a lighter weight. It's stretch. It's non salvage And, you know, there's there are folks who are out there who want something that looks like that, but it's, you know, a little bit more hardcore. And I'm like, we're already ahead of you. We're already ahead of you. In fact, for spring summer 22, we have a 18 ounce big slub natural denim selvage you want to talk about hardcore natural we've got a hardcore natural coming out so um yeah next season you will uh next not next season 
next next season. So uh, I'm already my brain is already spring summer twenty two mode. Um, yeah, we're 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 starting to get the samples in the the in at HQ. We're gonna get the first batch of samples here. I mean, any minute now. And we're going to start showing that off to our retail partners. Of course, I'm going to preview a lot of that product with you guys. And, uh, and uh, you know, you guys will get the inside scoop, of course, as always. Um, then I'm going to have to rewind my brain a little bit into fall, winter 21 mode as that product starts to hit our warehouse. Um, we're going to start seeing product hit our warehouse in July. It'll start shipping sometime in August. And... I'm thinking closer to the end of July, start of August, I will have the full release schedule set up. So, I'll, you know, of course, I'll have a blog post uh, that goes with that. And uh, the the fall winter 21 preview video, I, I know I've talked about it before, but releasing it, I will release it soon, soon. To be fair, a lot of you guys have seen a lot of this stuff, you know, but uh, it'll be nice to see it all in one place. And of course, in better quality than my uh, my Instagram live streams here. So that's what's coming up. Um, Moreau, 8569 writes, hello from Guelph, B. Any sample of the Quebec Vulgar Selvage Hostile? Not yet. Not yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's gonna happen. I just, we just haven't, uh, the next time I do some kind of jacquard selvage edge, that's when we'll do the sampling for that denim. I mean, it, it will be um, the vulgar selvage. Will it be the vulgar selvage base? Hmm, that's actually a good question. I guess we could use... Hmm, that's a good question. Do we use the vulgar selvage base, which I really like because it fades really well? Or should we do... No, you know what? I think we should do the vulgar selvage base. Or something. I don't know. Or should we use something else? Make, make something else completely new. I don't know. Now I'm thinking... But I was I was thinking vulgar selfish base. We'll see. We will see. We'll see what you guys say. Okay. A lot of waves of hello, 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 everybody. Thank you for joining. We're gonna scroll all the way down. If I missed your question, please feel free to ask it again. Um Heavy Fox, please. That will happen for sure. Um you know, I've been I've been uh, messaging back and forth with Sally. Uh, Sally Fox, uh, the, the the creator of Fox Fiber. So there's there's some projects that we will be doing with her at some point. Um, also, I as soon as we can get back to the states, uh, I, I'm gonna go visit the farm. I want I want to see where the the cotton is grown. I want to learn from the farmers, from the people. You know, that's one th that's one aspect of denim creation. I haven't dipped my toes into you know i've seen yarn made i've seen yarn dyed i've seen uh, uh fabric woven you know all that stuff you know I've, I've i've seen it before you know been to the factories many times um but the farm the farm is 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 where i've never been and i would like to go to the farm and i'd like to go and see and learn you know a lot what you know there's 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 what i understand about cotton and then there's what the 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 farmers understand about cotton and what makes you know a, a cotton good or you know what 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 whatever information i can you know the thing is i don't even know what i don't know and that's what i want to know so getting the first hand information from the people who are doing it that's what i want to do so uh when we get over to the states again I, we're going to go check out that farm we're going to see where our genes were born. Um, are the Indigo Indigo Stretch Selvage a core item? I have a new pair from the next installment of the Indigo Invitational, but it's not going to happen until spring 2022. The Indigo Indigo Stretch Selvage is a core item. So, yes. Um, seven, Papa George. Papa Giorgio. Love me, the natural seed. I'm glad you do, my friend. I, uh, you gotta, you gotta post some photos of you in them. We got, we gotta see, uh, how handsome you look. Um, I'm in the army and it takes months for us to ship something, but if you order something from Amazon, it'll be on the other side of the planet in three days. Um, that's, uh, Merck Sable 95. That's interesting. Um, 
AP, APO boxes and we ship to APOs and I think they're FPOs. I think that's what they're called. Those tend to come pretty fast. I've known some people in the military who, yeah, sometimes they tell me, I guess there's certain things that take a while to ship. Um, but sometimes they get stuff right away. I'm not, I'm not sure how it all works. Um, yeah, I mean, we do, we do ship to a lot of APO and FPOs. Um, and those are, for people who don't know, technically, and as far as I understand, the land that the, any military base might be internationally is considered America. So, you know, we, we, we ship to those places. Um, yeah. And, and like when they put in their address, I think they put the country America in. I, I, I don't, I have to double check, but those are technically American. I don't know what they call, consider them exactly, but we ship to them all the time. And very rarely do we get any, um, any uh, complaints about something taking a long time to ship. In fact, I, I would say that we, we, it's, it's a pretty rare, it's pretty rare that we'll get an email like that. So yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you, if, if you, if you order from us, it, you'll, you'll, you'll get your, your package uh, quickly. Hello from Bangladesh. Thanks for joining. It's a very international crowd today. Uh, VV54 writes, Blanca jeans, not denim, right? Um, no, they're, they're, they're absolutely denim. Uh, unless there's a, you, you kind of wrote it in quotes. Um, I'm not sure, uh, if, if that's, uh, if that means something. Um, okay. Um, make a gene that when it fades, it reveals the vulgar, the vulgar reveal. Hmm. I'm just trying to think how you would do that. Like, if you want it on the fabric, um, if you did it on the fabric, you do a jacquard denim, so a, pa a denim woven with a pattern on it, with, you know, all your favorite swear words, and then you do a coating on top. I don't know. I don't know. Could be interesting. Um... When will the rainbow fade come out? So the next rainbow core is scheduled for spring, summer, 22. So I would imagine, I don't, I mean, it, it's too far in advance for me to give you a specific date, but we typically release, you know, spring, summer items between January and March. You know, sometimes some slower things might, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 drag out a little bit, but um, somewhere around the first quarter of 2022. Um, um, started breaking in a pair of the Hanami salvage today. Lovely. Thanks. You are welcome. That denim is another one of these things that when we, when it came out, it sold out. You sold out at like a, I would say a pretty regular pace, but I think it was after we had basically sold out of that gene that it became kind of like a folklore. Like we need, I I need to have these. So you know, we've been getting bombarded lately with requests for the Hanami, and you know, we did a small like we found a few pairs, did a restock on those, and then like they flew out in like you know a day. I have I have a, a, another small batch. Um, I found a retailer that had them, and uh, I asked them if, if we could have them back. You know, I, I guess they were sitting on them. So we're gonna have a little bit more coming back in in the next few weeks. We'll make an announcement before we release them. So anybody who's looking for the Hanami, sit tight. We will we will have an announcement soon. Um, it's a little bit of inventory. It's not a lot, but um, yeah. We'll have a tiny, tiny restock on the Hanami salvage pretty soon. Um, Riley Lobrian writes, Bayzad, that's me. Grabbed my super guy recycled this morning. The moment they became available, I see my size is already sold out. 
Thankfully, I got some crazy stoked on these. Yes, we weren't kidding when we said that this was highly anticipated. In the emails, I wrote that, you know, don't sleep on this. Get it while you can. Um, you know, I mentioned that on the Instagram post as well. It was, I guess, you know, it just built up, you know, months of, of you know, the, the, the recycled salvage came out in the, in the weird guy and the easy guy and, and everybody, all the super guy customers just waiting and waiting and patiently waiting. Thank you very much for patiently waiting. And, uh, we just knew that this was really, really building. So, um, yeah, if, if your size sold out, you know, we'll, we'll try to locate a pair for you or head over to the blog post. We have a complete listing of all of the retailers that carried the recycled salvage and you can see the ones that carry the super guy. So if, if, if you can't find it on Tatian Yoko or Naked Famous Denim NYC, you know, check that blog post out between all of the retailers that have it. You know, it's still, it's still, you know, it just came out. So, you, you know, you, you should be able to, to locate one. If you still can't, let me know. I'll, I'll, we'll see what we can do. But, uh, yeah, that one, that one's going fast. I, you know, I don't want to be in this, it's nice to be in this spot where, you know, things just blow out, but, um, that's not as I intended or planned it. So, um, I, I, I don't want people to not get the things that they want. So, uh, it, it, it I, I'm just having to rethink the way, you know, we're, I'm, I'm planning all of the, all the stuff. So all the orders. So, uh, yeah, um, it's a good problem. And I, I don't like disappointing people, so it's it's a, it's a, it's just it's bugging me a little bit that, that I have to I have to figure out the solution to this problem. Um, Merck Sable ninety five writes, I can't wait for the new elephant. I'm going to be showing off the elephant X in this video, so uh, stay tuned. Christian Stevenson writes, Christian Stevenson twelve writes. I'm wearing the Hanami Easy Guys right now. Cheers from Victoria, BC. Well, thank you, and I'm glad that you're enjoying them. I hope you're having a nice day out in Victoria. I, I hope to come back to Canada as soon as I can. I don't know where. Uh, we'll 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 see. Um, a lot of uh, you know, everyone's asking when you're coming back. When you're coming back, I'm like, man, what are those borders opening up? So it's, uh, it's not that they're not open, but it's very. Uh, prohibitive right now for us to go back to Canada because there's a uh there's a uh, a, a a requirement to quarantine at a, uh, a a hotel facility and the cost of that is is just really high especially for two people and then on top of the testing that you need to do before that so it could end up costing up upwards of like $5,000 of you know, between the testing and the hotels to, to go home. And, uh, you know, especially if we're, we're going to be visiting for, um, you know, a month. So you do that and then you got two weeks quarantine and then, you know, I, I, it just, it's, it's very difficult right now. So hopefully, uh, things, things change. The world is changing and, uh, we'd like to, we'd like to get on an airplane and, 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 See all of you people. Um, the Elephant 9s are my favorites ever. Bring on the Elephant 10s. The Elephant 10s will be known as the Elephant X. The Elephant X. Like So, uh, yeah, coming soon. Coming soon. Um, in fact, the Elephant X will be one of the earlier releases of Fall Winter 21. So, it'll be early, mid-September... At this point, you know, things in our, on our production schedule can change, but we're looking at a, uh, a September ish release on them. Um, J. David Roa writes, Hey, how's it going, my dude? It's going well. Are there any other genres at the same weight of Mr. Poopy Butthole that I could do for summer in a different color? Jeans, that is. Um, any other lightweight jeans right now? Well, we have several lightweight options. Um, if you head over to Tate and Yoko. Tate and Yoko. It's not Tate and Yoko. It's Tate and Yoko. 
some people call it Tate, um, which I understand. I mean, it, it, it's written like Tate. Um, what are we going to look at for summer? The Whisper Stretch. Oof, that one's also pretty sold out here. Um, gone. We've got uh, 28, 29, 38. So just kind of the edge sizes. Um, yeah, that one, that one would have been a really nice option for you. Eight ounce featherweight. The Mr. Booby Butthole is nine ounces, if I remember correctly. Um, you might want to hunt for those. I think that's that's the closest thing to the Mr. Booby Butthole. If you want a a more classic looking jean instead of like a, a you know a lightweight a light blue chambray, the Whisper Stretch is the way to go. Um, recycled, if you can. Uh, we got the Max Classic Easy Guy. Yeah, super guy. Look, you know, only a few sizes left. 30, 31, 32, 34. Everything else is gone. Weird guy, just a 40. Easy guy is just a 40. Classic, just a 26 and 28. Max, we got a few here. The high skinny comes out next Friday. So, so yeah, watch out for that. Summer Sky, yeah, again, just the 42s. So, just the edge sizes here. Like, oof. Sorry, guys. This season, uh, things really... They really moved. Um, but uh, next season, I will make sure we have more inventory. Um, <clears throat> um, I never had a pa pair of Naked and Famous, and I'd like to try some out. I like them with a lot of texture. Um, what would you recommend in your line? Thanks. If you like a lot of texture, um, we have... I'm just trying to think of what we have in stock right now. I don't want to recommend something that we don't have. Um, the Mr. Oh, actually, if you like Rick and Morty, the Pickle Rick denim is super slubby. It has tons and tons of texture. That is, of course, if you want Pickle Rick. Um, let's check out the MIJs. It's just a matter of inventory right now. We have... Things are just moving. Um, do we have any Okayama Spirits in stock? That would be another good option for you. Yes, this is what you want. Assuming I have sizes and it depends on your fit, but the Okayama Spirit 4 very, very beautifully textured, very slubby, only 188 bucks. You've got a lot of great texture here, 16 ounces. And the beauty of this is uh, you have all this texture and it's samphorized. So you don't have to worry about shrinkage. We have the Okayama Spirit 5 coming out in the fall. It'll be the Okayama Spirit 4 base. So dark indigo, 16 ounce slubby with a black weft. So that's another great option. Um, anything on our Okayama Spirit line, Japan Heritage line, um, those are always going to be super textured. Um, so watch out, uh, watch out for those releases. Um, uh, sir, uh, server, I don't know how to say this. Submersion, sub submersion. Um, weird question. My brother accepted a job to come to live in Japan for a year and teach PE, but the company is still uncertain on whether the COVID situation will allow the program to happen this year. My understanding is that in September they're going to allow they're going to allow for um, foreign because in Japan, for people who don't know, there's a lot of international. Uh, teachers a lot of people come here to teach English or, or teach you know different things and um, they so long as you have a visa then you can come and so that's not going to be a problem uh, I think for your brother to come it, it, it might be up to the school whether or not they, they decide they want to have the program but so long as they can issue a a, a, a visa so uh, you know a, a, basically a permit for someone to come in and, and live and work um, that person can come. Um, I think the only restriction, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think they had some restrictions on, on like super hot beds of COVID 
um, where they even said, even if you have a visa, you can't come. Uh, so, uh, but I, that's not America. I think it's like India or Pakistan or something like that. They, they, they had some kind of restriction. They might have lifted that. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, English teachers, I know that they're, they're, they're coming through. I don't think that's, that's an issue. Um, is Japan letting people come into the country from America? If you have a visa, yes. But tourism is still not permitted. Um, so, yeah, the Olympics are, I think... 30 something days away and it will be at, at, at this moment it is still going forward with um with audience um they will have like some social distancing rules and stuff in place um but no international audience luckily Risa and I we have some tickets uh to go see some events but um yeah there won't be an international audience and uh they they haven't exactly um, outline the rules yet for like what you're I think you're basically you can't hang out like you can go to the event and as soon as the event is done you gotta leave like so and then of course it'll be like minimum capacity it's just that in Japan vaccine rollout compared to the states has been uh, a bit slow um so there, this is not like even people in my age group, like they're not, they're, they're not vaccinating anybody in our age group yet. Like it's only generally elderly people at this point. And they just want to make sure that the elderly people are covered completely before they start vaccinating younger people. Um, I mean, it's a good strategy. And the, the only thing is that the rollout in general was a bit slow because Japan wanted to do their own tests on all of the, uh, the, the medicines, the vaccines. Um, before they, uh, you know, distribute them. So it's just, you know, the Japanese way of being uh, extra careful with anything. So, um, so that's why their just rollout has been slower. And there's also been a lack of, um, workers that can administer, um, vaccine. You know, again, Japan, they like the rules. They love the rules here. So, only, you know, people with certain uh, criterias could uh, administer vaccine. You know, you had to be, uh, I don't know whether licensed or whatever is the right, the right word for it. But, um, you know, they, for example, I think they, they, they changed the rule so that um, dentists were allowed to administer vaccine. I guess they were just, they were so low on people who were able to do it. But like, you know, even a dentist wasn't allowed you know, say, say they, the dentist wanted to, or, or had, you know, a dentist has the capacity to, to do an injection, you know what I mean? They do it all the time. So, but I guess they were not qualified to do vaccine. I don't know. Maybe they're, 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 I have no idea. Actually, I, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but all I can say is they, they had a lack and they still have a lack of people who are able to administer it. So they're trying to open it up to other, um, other, uh, uh, people in, I guess, medical field and in, in different medical fields that I guess would have the capacity to do it. And so there's a, a little bit of a slowdown there. I, I suspect that if Japan had r rolled out vaccine the same way that the United States did, then, then I don't know, even if international tourism would have been back by the summer, I doubt it. I mean, no, no, very few places in the world are, uh, I, I, I've seen some, I've seen some countries say that it's okay. I don't know. I, you know, I watch like 10 minutes of news a day. I have no idea what's going on. Don't, don't believe anything I say. Um, back to Jean's talk. Let's talk about Jean's and not, uh, what I don't know about. Um, when I miss a, out on a pair, they say I see it as an, when, when I miss out on a pair, they say I see it as a opportunity to get another one just as cool in the future. That way of thinking helped me with my sneaker hunting, so it applies to denim too. That is true. Electric Bamboo writes, so if you miss out on something, and I, I have told people this also, like if you miss out on something, don't worry. Next season, there will be a bunch of more things that we put out, and I'm sure there's going to be something there that you want. So you can't have it all. You can have it all if you are uh, immensely wealthy and, the you know, you can do whatever you want. But most of us aren't that. And if we are, you know, regular people, 
then we just have to live with the fact that we we can have the things that we like, but not all of the things that we like. And yeah, just like with sneaker hunting, I used to be a I used to be a big sneaker guy. I have to tell you that I I used to really follow all the releases, get as much as I could. You know, if I missed out on something, I was butthurt about it. And <clears throat> my my thing with sneaker hunting was that. <clears throat> It felt like when I was really into sneakers, and I, you know, it's not to say that I'm, I don't enjoy them anymore. It's just I just don't make it a point to uh, <clears throat> seek after pairs. Um, but when I did, I felt like okay, maybe there was one or two sneak, maybe three sneakers a month that would come out that was like the hype hype. <clears throat> but now it seems like it's like. 10 pairs a week that are like that. And like every, every release is some kind of special hype release. <clears throat> and it, you know, it felt like it was very much on the underground of what, you know, sneaker hunting, sneaker, you know, acquiring was. And then it just became that every, every sneaker now is a rare sneaker. And when every sneaker is a rare sneaker, it's like, is it so rare? I don't know. I just don't like the way that this whole, I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm, it just it became such a, a such a pissing competition, I guess, in a way. Like, and then the resale market, and like I'm I'm seeing prices on like you know there's these websites like uh, where you can sell your used sneakers or they're selling sneakers, <clears throat> and they're going for like two three thousand dollars. I've got some in my in my in you know I've got some old ones, and I'm like, geez, like I keep like I'm not gonna sell them. They're worn, I, you know, but. I just can't fathom that people would spend that much on a pair of sneakers. It's so bizarre. Um, yeah. When I see two, three, four, five, six, ten thousand dollars or more on a sneaker, I remember when, like, again, when I was back in sneaker collecting days, maybe one sneaker would be the ultra rarest thing in the world and it had the, the super high price point. You know, it was unbelievably rare. And now it's like, oh no, a generally, you know, quote unquote rare sneaker, right? From the late 2000s that every sneaker head got, every sneaker head got, is now a, a $3,000 sneaker? I don't know. I guess because, you know, there's only so many of them that aren't dead stock. But to be fair, there's probably a ton of them that are dead stock because... Everybody who bought them back then probably bought a pair to wear and a pair to, to stock. You know, that was just the mentality back then. I know a lot of people did that. Um, so I don't know. It, it feels weird. It's kind of like, you know, you, again, I'm going to go into a topic I don't know that much about. But when I was a kid, I used to collect a lot of uh, uh, sports cards, you know, baseball, basketball, all that stuff. And, you know, that market for me, it, it like I never bought them because I was interested in selling them, you know, for me, it was collecting them, trading with your friends, that kind of stuff, you know, and, um, but I always, you know, you, you I would get back, you know, Beckett magazine, I'm sure they still make it, but Beckett magazine was the price guide for all your, 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 your sports cards. And you see, oh, I have a $10 card, I have a $12 card. And then you go to the sports card store and you try to sell it and they'll give you like 75 cents for it. And like, you know, I'm like, who the heck actually buys this stuff for this price? You know, there was always the, the, the price guide and, you know, I get it that the price guide is the the selling price and, you know, the, the, the sports card store needs to make a profit. Got it. Understood. But now I see sports cards going for just tremendous amounts of money. To be fair, I'm sure it's like the rare one-offs here and there. But, like, it's it's a lot of money for these cards. And I'm like, but everyone was collecting sports cards. There's got to be thousands of these things. Like, what happened? Did somebody just hoard all of them and buy them all up on eBay and... I don't know. It's it's just it's just something I don't know about, but it just seems like it's a weird thing that everybody collected this stuff. You know, there's got to be so many of these things out there and they're going for a lot of money. And either it's like, you know, you see these articles about like the one, you know, rare misprint or perfect print card or whatever. I don't know uh, that goes for a lot of money and then all your other stuff is worthless. Not sure. But 
even in video game, video game collecting prices are going up like crazy. So it's a weird market now. I guess uh, <clears throat> I have no idea what's driving all of this, but it seems that a lot of this stuff, game collecting, sneaker collecting, sports collecting, it all went from like, you know, just if they had their own communities to being very mainstream or being very, you know, in people's faces all of a sudden. And uh, now I see people who, you know, I, I I never knew were uh, sports card collectors or anything like that. They're they're posting all this stuff on their Instagram, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, neat. Um, just not uh, just not for me, I guess. I don't know if it's for you, but it's not not so much for me. Another long de undenim related rant. Sorry about that. Um, back to the future collab. We just did a Rick and Morty collab, man. Rick and Morty. Um, uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Maybe one day, um, you know, movies, of course, will always be part of our um, collaborative projects. Um, we will we'll just see down the line. Obviously, I would love to do so many movies that I love. And, you know, Back to the Future is certainly one of those iconic ones that is beloved by all. What would that be exactly? A Back to the Future collab. Um, you know, I wonder. I'd have to think about it, but we'd have to we'd have to incorporate a DeLorean and a flux capacitor somehow. We're gonna figure that out. Um, uh, yeah, the poopy butthole jeans look great. It's just that technically I'm not supposed to wear any branded characters because I work in TV ratings. LOL. TV ratings. That's an interesting. That's an interesting job. I wonder. I wonder what that's like. You know, every time I, uh, you know, there's so many uncut versions of movies I like, and maybe it's different TV for movies, but <clears throat> it's funny to see what they cut in a movie, especially like violence wise. You know, you might have a particularly violent movie and then they cut out this really mundane thing or they, or, 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 or the scene had to be trimmed down by a few seconds. So it's, not so frightening. I'm like, I, I don't know. We're watching people get, you know, murdered here. What's, uh, what's the problem? <clears throat> um, Electric Bamboo writes, made in Japan line. We have a made in Japan line. It's called our MIJ line. And uh, we have a, a, a release practically every season. Um, will August, Friday, August the 13th be our final Friday? Um... So far, so good, but there may be delays. So I'm not, I'm not going to commit to Friday the 13th for the Friday the 13th denim. I want it to be, and we're going to try to hit that target. Um, recycled denim may need to be a seasonal staple like the elephant series. Yeah, maybe, you know, we're starting to, there's a lot of things that could be a staple, you know, you know, there's, there's a lot. So we will, uh, we will evaluate that and, uh, see what, what other things, you, you know, the thing is like, if, if everything becomes a staple, then every season is just, you know, a new iteration of a, of a, an existing gene. And I, as much as I, I would, wouldn't mind doing that for certain, uh, styles, I also want to create new styles. Um, you know, I don't. I don't want to just rest on, you know, just revamping existing stuff. It's fun. You know, we can do that for certain things, and we can do it every now and then. But you know, a recycled denim every season. I don't know. Maybe, but it might be more interesting if you do it every now and then. You know, um, we will see. Um, Lita Brown, thirty-three. Can vouch for the Oak Island Spirit Four. They are awesome. Yes, for the uh, for the person up there who is looking for a super textured denim, the Oak Island Spirit is definitely a great option for you. Um, sounds like the Oak, Oak Island Spirit Five and the Elephant X will be my next purchase. Well, I'm glad uh, I'm glad that uh, you, you, you've pre-planned. You will certainly be happy with them. I'm going to show off the Elephant X in today's live stream, so stick around for that. Um, Ever made considered a linen blend denim? Yes, and we have some linen stuff coming for spring summer 22. Um, can you briefly speak about the differences in fit between the easy guy and the weird guy? No problem. The easy guy 
is what I'm wearing right now. I, 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 I generally wear the easy guy. It's got a lot more room in the thigh. That is the biggest difference between them. The rise is also a little bit higher. So I wear them on the hip. So the crotch area is, is dropped a little bit. Whereas on the weird guy, it is, you don't have as much room in that area. It's, it's, it's like a mid rise, you know, kind of a normal rise. These, you've got a lot more room in the leg, in the thigh, in the bum area. You know, it's not fitted. Well, on my body type, it's not fitted. If you're an athletic build, if you've got bigger legs, more muscular thighs, it's going to be a more fitted jean on you. And then you get the small leg opening at the bottom. My leg opening is not so small because I, I've, I've hemmed them pretty short and they're, they're, they're to, to make them a little bit wider. But uh, you do get a similar leg opening to the super guy with the easy guy. So the, the weird guy is more of a, a, a classic slim fit jean. Not particularly tight, but it, it doesn't give you the extra room that you get in the easy guy. So personally, I like the easy guy more. I just like having the extra room. I know that some people, they like the extra, the extra rise in the easy guy. They may not necessarily need the extra room, so they size down one. Um, and by that I mean, if you're wearing a 32 weird guy, typically you might wear a 31 easy guy. So if you wear a 32 weird guy and you get a 32 easy guy, that easy guy is going to be big on you. And it's supposed to be big on you by design. So keep that in mind. And also make sure to check the measurement guides. The measurement guides are always the best way for you to determine the right size for you. Um, but those are some general, you know, ideas there for you. Um, Roger Casanova, too, writes, just found out about the brand through the Rick and Morty collab. Looking forward to owning a pair soon. Fantastic. You know, part of why we do these collaborations is so that we can draw in new people to the raw denim community, the raw denim audience. And, you know, this is a perfect example. Um, not everybody is a denim head there. You know, that's that's that's. And, you know, we got to find creative ways to, you know, introduce raw denim to a new demographic, you know, new people. Um, so part of the reason why we do that is to do that. The other reason why we do that is because we love it and we love the creative process of creating a denim fabric, a denim collection based off of these properties. So welcome to the raw denim community, my friend. Um, all right. I'm not going to read that one. Um I'm going to, I'm scrolling down because I think I'm a little bit slow, but if I missed your question, let me know. Um, are you still making regular shirts? I need that extra length. Um, the easy shirt is no shorter than what the regular shirt was. The main difference between the regular shirt and the easy shirt, we don't make the, the regular shirt anymore. We make the easy shirt. The easy shirt has an inverted pleat on the back. So when you move, it kind of moves with you. So it, 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 the shirt just expands a little bit more with you. But aside from that, it's, it's a very nearly identical fit. So if you, if you like the regular shirt, you should like the easy shirt. Um, there's not a lot of differences between the two. Um, can you please make a more traditional straight leg fit? Yes. Um, Pastor48 writes, curious to know how the truck with the raw denim upholstery is going. We got it in Montreal. We're going to be making a video going over all the quirks and details of the truck. So stick around and... Uh, We'll, we'll probably have that in the next month or so. Um, I'm not there to film it, so we're, we're, we're just figuring all that stuff out. Um, but yeah, we will have a video. It's going to be a lot of fun and, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be, we'll be very excited to show that off. Um, what company did y'all go with on the next knife? Actually, actually, that's a good segue. 
because last night we just got the shipment of the new knives. So these are the Higanokami knives. These are the made in Japan uh, f uh, foot folder knives. We just got the new color. So the first batch of them, as you guys know, uh, sold out day one instantly. Um, yeah, and the, the demand was so hot for that that we, we had to make a new batch. And of course, the, we're, we're not going to redo the uh, original color or anything like that. We're, we're doing a, a new one. Um, let me just pull up the original ones for you so that you can see um, what they looked like. And then I'll, I'll do the little comparison here. Um, so... If you go on to tattooing or nakedandfamousdenim.com, you can see these were the, the, the first knives that we did. You know, uh, we did the, uh, the wood one and then we did this kind of pebbly, uh, you know, uh, navy one. So those were the first ones. Those sold out. They're gone. And so we needed to make a new rendition of that for the next release. Um, Want the knives, but a struggle to get them in the UK. Yes, I know that some, you know, obviously with knives, check with your local uh, laws. Um, some places you can have them, some places you can't have them, or you can have them, you just can't carry them in public. You know, whatever it is, follow the laws of your land. It's the same thing here. Like, I can have this knife. This is the new knife, by the way. I cannot have this on the street. I cannot carry this in my pocket it is illegal to do that um a knife of any size is illegal to carry in japan so you can only carry it if you have a particular intention like if you bought a uh, a sushi knife you know if you bought a kitchen knife from the store and you're going home you're allowed to do that but you cannot carry a knife so um yeah, those, those are the rules here. You got to play by the rules. That's, uh, that's the way it goes. But in your home, you can have a knife, obviously. But uh, Or like if you went camping and you needed it because you, you're, you're going to be cooking outside, sure, you could have a knife. But uh, like, yeah, there's a lot of rules and uh, follow your rules. So let's take a closer look at the knives. So first, again, we had the original knives here. And then we've got the new knives right here. So we have, uh, so we're going to decide on, on what to do. It's a super deep, like lacquered navy on brass. You can see the brass on the inside. So it's, it's a, like a deep indigo. It's really, really beautiful. Um, it almost looks black. It's like a, a, a it's, it's, like a, a, a midnight blue. Um, you can see a little bit of my fingerprints on there. Sorry about that. Um, so that just came in. So it either comes in here, like we can, we can do this kind of finish on it with, uh, the, the logo and the, uh, and the uh, nude, uh, uh, woman here, um, embossed. Or we can have it with, uh, like gold paint. Now, obviously, the paint will rub off eventually, um, just like all things, uh, you know, will wear and tear. But uh, so th those are our two options here. And that will be the next release of the uh, of the Higi no Kami knives. So these are all made in Japan. Um, and we have a full blog post and story uh, listed on the website. So you can go and check that out. Um, we're going to make a wooden one also. All right. Risa says that there's a cherry bark one coming as well. So uh, stay tuned. We've got uh, we've got more knives coming your way. We we have. Um, I'm not sure where we're at, but I know Brandon was was trying to. Uh, we've reached out to a couple of like North American knife uh, makers um, to see what we can do. Uh, so that is going to be coming. Um, I don't have any updates on that yet, but we're, we're, when I do, I'll let you know. But uh, we we will be making a few more of these, like you know, sm uh, small accessory, everyday carry type products. Um, 
So yeah, new knives. Um, I'm just trying to think. Trying to think here. Okay. Um, the Eve 54 writes, the Iron Snail posted a video about the Rick and Morty jeans. That dude knows how to edit his videos. Puts out great material. The Iron Snail, Michael, he's a, a great friend of the brand. Great friend. And his videos are really good. His videos are really, really good. Um, I, I just, he's a very good storyteller. You know, I, I, I message with him, you know, on, on, on WhatsApp every now and then. And, uh, I'm just, I'm not as talented at making videos as him. And I'm just, uh, he, he's one of those, I wish I was, but, uh, um, yeah, I ask him sometimes for, for some, some tips on how to, how to improve, uh, yeah, go go and watch, go and subscribe to his channel. And go watch it. Oh, go watch that uh, Rick and Morty review. I think it was, you know, it, it really that video really shows what the collaboration genes are. Like I was talking about before, when we do these collaborations, you know, what our aim is with a lot of this stuff, and it's to 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 bring in a new audience, somebody who who. You know, they, they haven't looked at raw denim before, but now here's an opportunity for them to do that. And so he kind of shows how that, that works and how, how, you know, are these properties do bring in a new audience. And, uh, that's what I really like about that. Um, yeah, there's so, so many times I hear from people, oh, my first pair was the Dragon Ball. My first pair was the Street Fighter. My first pair was, you know, this or that. And it's like, if it wasn't for those things, you know, what are the chances that that person would have gone into raw denim, right? So that's why we keep doing these things. And I know that there's some, you know, traditionalists out there that, that look at this kind of stuff and they think it's not, you know, it's not, I always, I always, I always like to challenge the traditionalists, um, you know, quote unquote, authentic out there and they, they think it's, you know, why are they doing this? And, you know, it's, it's not uh, what it's all about. And it's like, it is what it's all about because it's happening. So it, it is what it's all about. But, you know, for us, it's, it's fun and we get to bring in more people. You know, the more people in raw denim, the better raw denim across the, across the nation, across the world, across the globe, salvage foundation. Um, I remember seeing them when I was younger. I couldn't afford them. I finally got three pairs of jeans. I'm so hyped. Thank you very much. You're making the best collabs ever. Well, thank you for being a part of the raw denim world. You know, I remember there was a interview I did once. Um, a buddy of mine, I think it was in this video. I'm pretty sure it was in that video. And, uh, so there's a video called the the denim samurai. My, my my friend of mine just he he used to make videos of just random like people he knew and uh, he 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 wanted to do one on me. So he he made this video. It wasn't really denim related. It was just kind of you know, I guess quote unquote in, interesting people. Um, and he talked. I talked about what got me into denim, and part of what really got me into premium denim was the value. And so if you're looking to buy better things, better menswear, better clothes, the pr there's a there's a price barrier. So, you know, there there's there's oftentimes there's this jump in price from maybe what you're used to buying. And for me that was a hard pill to swallow. I didn't have a lot of money. Um I was uh you know, just, I'm, you know, making, uh, I, I forget. I, dude, I used, I used to work for pennies. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to be a paper boy and, um, I think I was making like two bucks an hour doing that. Um, I remember my first real job, I was making 685 an hour. So, you know, my, my, the wages I was earning as a young person were not a lot. And so to, to look at a pair of jeans that was, you know, $200 or more 
that was a lot of money. But, and it still is, still has a lot of money, don't get me wrong. But people are making more money now than, you know, jeans were 200 bucks then and I was making 685. So, you know, I don't know how that works, but you, you, you know, the amount of hours I would have to work in order to acquire that pair of jeans is much more than it is today. Um, that said, I always felt that if I bought something that I could use a lot, then I was getting more value for it. Like if I bought a, a designer t-shirt or whatever, I couldn't, I can't wear that t-shirt every day, but I could wear that, those jeans more often. So that's really what got me into raw denim in the first place. And from there, things just kind of, you know, you start to, you start to, you know, at some point you start to make, uh, uh, you start to justify things a little bit more. And sometimes as young people who get into fashion, we, uh, we get excited. I know that a lot of people who get into raw denim for the first time, they get excited. You know, they get this pair, then that pair, and then the next pair. And, you know, the, all of a sudden you've got a lot of pairs. Um, and, and you, once you've got the pairs that you need, you know, that's, that's, that's a good time. But I remember, I mean, I, I, I went nuts. Um, and I bought a lot. I had a lot. Of, I, I still have a lot of jeans, but I was buying jeans like crazy. I once bought a fox fur hat that was a very expensive purchase that I, uh, uh, luckily I sold it on eBay later on. I recouped a lot of that money, but, uh, it was a very expensive hat, but yeah, I mean, you start to justify dumb, dumb purchases, but I mean, I think I left my, my mentality of, you know, trying to get the, the best value for my money. And, uh, I just wanted to have things. Um, but yeah, I think in general, raw denim is the best raw denim and a good pair of boots and a good leather jacket those are the things that you will get the most wear out of in life. You know, so long as you stay the same size, you know, your jeans are going to fit. So long as your your feet don't grow that sometimes they get a little fat if you get, you know, gain weight, but generally speaking your boot if you got uh, you've got good boots, those are going to last forever. Um, you know, as long as you're doing your maintenance on them. So there's a lot of things that you can you can own that might be expensive, but over the lifetime of that garment will be Maybe, in, in fact, depending on how long you can wear that garment, might end up being some of the cheapest clothing you own. There's nothing more expensive than a cheap t-shirt that you wear once or twice and, and don't wear it again or you throw it away. That's actually really expensive. Um, so, yeah. The key, the Eve, the Eve, 54 rights. My first real job was five eighty five an hour. Definitely could not afford them back when I was 16. Yeah, five eighty five. dollars I remember working for six eighty five. dollars I was a stock boy at an electronics store. Um, I remember when I, when I started earning like eight bucks an hour, I was like, wow. Like, and I, I, I worked at a different uh, place after that, but, or I, or I made $7 an hour at, at Manchu walk. I was working at a Chinese, uh, fast food restaurant. So, um, yeah, things are different now. <laughs> things are different now. 685. I was so happy at 685. I have to tell you, I was, I was, I was 16 and the fact that I could just buy chips and soda anytime I wanted was that, that was all that needed that I needed to make me happy. Um, I was eight fifty eight in pounds, dude. Yeah, eight fifty eight. I don't I don't know. Uh, that's more than six eighty five Canadian. Six eighty five Canadian in the mid nineties. That was worth not a lot of money. I'll tell you, not a lot of money American. I'll tell you that much. Um, Speaking of value, is there anything more worth the cost of speaking of value, is there anything more worth the cost of songs? For around a buck, you can get hours of emotional uh renaissance over the rest of your life. That is true. Um and uh so you can buy your, your songs online, sure. I like going to the thrift store and buying CDs because most thrift stores have CDs for a dollar. Um, and, uh, you can get the whole CD for a buck. And as someone from my age, 
You know, you got you kind of got to be someone who was born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s and, you know, the early 2000s. You know, that's the kind of music I still listen to. I Every now and then I'll, I'll venture off into some new music land, but it's not often. I'm telling you, I listen to like Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson and uh, like, you know, that's what I listen to. <laughs> um, you know, I listen to, you know, just, you know, then I listen to like, you know, some some punk stuff that and, and pop punk stuff that I grew up with, too. And. But I don't I don't venture off into a lot of new music, but uh, the thrift store is a gold mine of, you know, the 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 80s, 90s and 2000s. And it's all a dollar. So uh, if you're like me, uh, go hit up that thrift store, get all get all your favorite songs uh, for a buck. And I have a music server. I just rip all my music to uh, to a music server at home. I have Spotify and all that stuff, too. But um, I like having the real discs. If I'm going to do critical listening on my stereo, um, but uh, that's fewer and far between. But I do tend to have, uh, I do like, you know, nicer headphones. Um, uh, so uh, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a full on audiophile, but uh, sometimes I'm, I don't know what it is about people who are in the audiophile world and it's just about making sure that you have the best, you know, uh, 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 bit rates and everything. So CD quality or better is what I'm always after. You know, I listen on Spotify, you know, it's fine. It's streaming. But uh, if I want to do serious listening, I have, I have devices and things for that. Um, I bought one of these. I haven't used it in a while, but uh, where is it? I don't even know if it has battery, but uh, and I still have I I still have iPods, so um, I don't know if this thing powers on. Battery might be dead, but uh, it's my uh, it's my Android uh, uh, DAC digital audio player. So it's like a it's like an advanced iPod with a, a better um, uh, uh, amplifier and stuff like that. It's got this like neat scroll wheel here, so I can uh, really tune in the. Uh, can't see it but uh, you can really tune in to the uh, the volume um and yeah it's it's like a hefty piece of metal here it's uh it sounds great uh I, and uh i have like 500 gigs of music on here so um it's a it's a nifty little music player um it's uh, from from onkyo you know they make the uh, the stereo systems uh, and I got this anyways, nice leather case, a little bit older. There are way newer models and way better models than this. But uh, for the price, I think this is a very good purchase for me. Again, non-denim related stuff. Um, I got a pair of Naked and Famous, my first paycheck. Had them three or four years. Thank you very much. That's, uh, that, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I'm happy to hear that we were your first purchase. Um, I love the DC Comics collab, Batman Forever, my favorite. Batman is forever my favorite hero. I thought you were writing Batman Forever is my favorite movie. Um, that was one of the movies. Batman Forever was the first movie. I'm just trying to, yeah. Batman Forever was the first movie when I realized that sometimes movies aren't that great. I, I remember spending my own money to go and see Batman Forever, and I was like, oh, hmm. I see. And I, I, I was just trying to convince myself that it was good, because I didn't, I, I didn't want to feel like I wasted my money. Um, yeah, I think I was in grade six when that happened. And I was working that paper route, and I was making like two-something bucks an hour. So, yeah, for me to, you know, spend my money on the movies, I think it cost like you know, eight bucks or whatever. That was, that was a big deal for me. It was a big deal. Um, I remember in the 2000s, I used all my birthday money to buy a pair of Rock and Republic jeans. Uh, I used to sell, I mean, I worked in a denim store. I was selling a lot of Rock and Republic jeans. Those were very expensive jeans, man. Like two, three, four hundred dollars. We used to get the ones with the crystals on them with the Victoria Beckham. And uh, the prices for those were, you know, you can get them for like three, four hundred bucks, but we had some like super rare ones that were like seven hundred dollars and crazy amounts. And literally, 
we would get like a, a fresh batch of them in the store and by the afternoon they would all be gone. You know, we might have a dozen or maybe 20 pairs of them um, in the shop, four or $500 a pop, gone in an afternoon. Like the second they would come in, it didn't matter. Like, you know, it's not like we called our customers, our, our clients who were waiting on them. Some of us did. But the ladies would come into the shop, see that they were there and just buy them. It was, it was, it was crazy. It was a crazy time for, for jeans. Um, okay. Uh, fallout boy. Yeah. You know, good old, good old pop punk. Um, they, they lasted two months before disintegrating. Rock and Republic jeans were notorious for disintegrating. We used to get so many returns on them. Um, yeah, they were, uh, they were paper thin. People liked them because they were thin and, and comfortable, but they would also just disintegrate. Um, yeah, I mean, thin denim, a lot of heavy washing and processing, that's what happens to your fabric. It just becomes, it becomes very delicate. Um, would you do any more DC collabs? Maybe, maybe. I mean, look, we're, we're, I'm never going to say never. Um, no plans at the moment, but, uh, um, but I, I, I'm maybe down the line, maybe down the line. Uh, El, El Richie writes, I remember Rock and Republic. I think all, a lot of us, if you were, if you were in the mid 2000s, like premium denim, if that was your interest. And a lot of us were there for Rock and Republic. Rock and Republic, true religion. Um, fancy pockets were, were the trend of the time. Um, Antique denim, anybody remember those? Those were very expensive. Um, antique denim, those were, wow. You, if, for those people who don't know, A-N-T-I-K -A denim. You gotta see the pockets here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, you guys don't even know. Um, I just gotta find the best picture. Oh, uh, this is, this really, this picture here sums up the 2000s denim scene right here. Look at these fancy pockets. These are antiques. These are antiques. Uh, these are antiques. Yeah. So it was like, you know, celebrity looking girls and fancy pockets. That's what sold jeans at the time. Um, yeah, this. Like, this was the mid-2000s, man. Antique denim, that was their logo. Um, you know, they made them for guys, too. Um, yeah, if you wanted bedazzlements on your jeans, like a lot of it, then, you know, fancy stitching. It was crazy what was going on. Um, so, those were, I don't know, four or $500 a pair. Very, very expensive. Um, very, very expensive jeans. Um, uh, rice a roni macaroni rice just bought my first pair of naked and famous jeans the true grit i love them great choice for a first pair that's all if, if the person who is looking for a uh a textured pair of denim is still watching the true grit is also another great option it's the pair i was wearing before the indigo invitational i'm gonna have to get back to wearing that pair i said they're about they're about halfway done. I still have a lot of life left in those jeans before I'm really happy with the way that they faded. Um, who was Batman in uh, Batman Forever? I'm pretty sure it was Val Kilmer. Pretty sure that was Val Kilmer. Um, okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Um, Antique and mech denim. Oh, yeah. There was another brand... Um, I'm just trying to think. They had a lot of stitching on the back. Uh, geez, what were they called? They were kind of like a, a budget. Ver they weren't. A, they weren't inexpensive, but they were much less expensive than this. Um, maybe it was Mech. I, I don't remember. But there, there, there was a lot of this at the time. Um, Good morning, Colin. 
Coates, 906, writes, Good morning. You were pondering whether people enjoy soaking their own unsamphorized jeans. I enjoy the process on a pair of naked famous loom state indigo. Right. So I was talking about it in the, maybe it was last week, about the way we were thinking about treating unsamphorized jeans down the line. And that is to maybe do the pre-soak on them for you guys. That way you don't have to worry about doing it yourselves. And I think, I think that's one of the reasons why we did so well with the brown fox is that it's, we, we got rid of that guesswork for you in terms of sizing. Now, if we do do that down the line, I'm sure we will make a lot of people happy and then we will make some people unhappy because they like to do it themselves. So it's one of those things that we got to consider. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how we treat it down the line. Um, you know, even when we don't do the pre-soak for you, we do the the post soak measurement guide for you so that you know or you have an idea of what the jeans will shrink to when you do soak them. So, you know, we, we do cover that as well. Um, okay, a couple more questions and we're going to go into uh, some previews. Um, uh, any recommendations on shirts or t-shirts that last as long as raw denim that look good with Naked Famous? Our shirts. Our shirts are heavyweight, ring spun, made in Canada. They last forever. And I mean, obviously, they don't actually last forever. But I've worn our shirts pretty much exclusively for as long as we've been making them. And the thing about T-shirts that I that I find happens a lot is you start to get a lot of like little random holes here and there never happens on our shirts. And I'm not saying that it, it, it can't happen. It's just in my experience with all of the amount of shirts I've had from that I've worn, they, they just don't do that. They, they really, really last a long time. They're comfortable. They're soft. You can wash them a bajillion times. They hold their shape. Um, you know, after the wash, maybe they shrink a little bit. You, you wear it, you stretch it out a little bit. It goes back to its normal size. But very, very high quality tea. We sell a lot of them. And I think if you look online for like best t-shirts, we're on a bunch of lists. Um, so you definitely want to check out our, uh, you definitely want to check out our tees. Um, there's something nice about the fit on the tees too. Hides the belly a little somehow. Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I've got a little bit of a belly and, uh, I'm wearing a medium right now. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I just, I like the way they fit. They feel comfortable. The, the, the cotton is really nice. Um, circular knit, made in Canada. There's, there's nothing not to like uh, about our tees. So if, if, uh, if, if you give it a try, I'm sure you'll be, I'm sure you'll be happy with them. Um, I'm so impressed with the raw denim heads who are under 30. Way to go, kids. You're miles ahead of me at that age. I think all the kids are miles ahead of all of us. Um, uh, you know, and that's just the way it is. Every generation, all the, they, they have, they have, they're, they're, they're smarter and they have more access to things. Um, at, at the same age, not all of them are smarter. I'll, I'll, I'll rag on millennials a little bit. Maybe I won't do it in the live stream, but, uh, um, when I, when I encounter there, I don't want to rag on millennials. Sorry, kids. Um, a lot of you are smarter. I'm not going to say all of you. A lot of you are smarter than we were at our, at our age. Um, I would say that the thing about the difference between m mindsets of, you know, there's this millennial generation, which they include, you know, I don't know what the year is, but some people tell me I'm a millennial. And I'm like, no, man. I went through most of my schooling without Google and the internet. Okay. And I think that people who, who, who went through, I have to look into this, like really, you know, remember going to the library and, you know, you had to write an essay and they're like, you need five sources and you had to find five books that you had to go through all of that stuff. Yeah, that's the difference. I think that's the difference. People who, ha who were forced to like really, um, hunt for information versus people being you know, basically given information. Um, so 
I think there's a, a there's a bit of a, a critical thinking difference in that mindset of folks, um, which I do find that, you know, between certain generations there, there that does exist. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just my own personal bias. Probably is my own personal bias. But uh, yeah, millennial too young to remember Challenger old enough to remember 9-11. Is that uh, maybe. I remember both. I mean, I would remember both. So what I'm, I don't know where I am. I don't, I, don't, I also don't like these. Uh, I don't like boxing in people in these, these, I think the term millennial is just used in the media to make people angry. Like, oh, the, anytime there's a millennial topic, oh, millennials don't know how to do this. And millennials don't know how to do that. I'm like, yeah, but millennials know how to do all this stuff. Like in, in certain ways they are, uh, they, they're very clever. I mean, they're certainly one thing I certainly envy about young people today is that they have access to all the music, all the movies and access to essentially the best camera ever all in their pocket. You know, if you have an iPhone or, you know, whatever, you have the best camera, you know, you know, you know, quote unquote, the best camera better than any camera I had as a kid. I didn't even have a camera as a kid. Okay. You have an ability to publish it. You have the ability to look at thousands of photographs. You know, this is, I love boomer talk with Bayside. I'm not a boomer, but I guess that, that the age for boomers keeps dropping, you know, it's just anybody who's not a millennial, I guess. But I just envy that because if you have that as a teenager, and by the time you're 25 or you're 30, you know how good at all of that stuff you're going to be. If you know what kind of photographer you're going to be by the time you're 30 years old when you've had the best camera ever in your pocket since you were a kid. I didn't get a camera until I was in my 20s. Um, so... I, I, I didn't know how to take a picture. I didn't know any of that stuff. And even then, like, you know, they didn't, we didn't have Instagram and all that stuff. I, and I had I had to learn. I had to go, you know, I, I had friends who were photographers and I'd go and hang out with them and they teach me stuff. But now you've got a million YouTube tutorials from the best photographers in the world. You can go and have access to all that information. They have so much access to incredible information at such a young age that by the time they are our age, they should be really, really, really talented at a lot of different things. That's what I envy about them. And I would say that our parents' generation will probably make that same argument about us and all the stuff that we had that they didn't have because, uh, you know, we had computers and we had, you know, piracy. So we got, we, we got to listen to all the music we wanted to, uh, if you were good at, at pirating music. <laughs> we had Napster. <laughs> Um, not really, uh, not, not, not really one can have the best of the best, but it's talent yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, you obviously have to practice anything that you do, but the fact that you have access and that you can become something really good without as many, um, barriers to entry as before. You know, if you want to, there's so many amazing cooks on Instagram, sorry, uh, on, on YouTube, you can learn to make, you know, super amazing meals right from a professional world-class chef. Whereas before, what did you have to do to do that? Okay, well, maybe there was a book somewhere that you had to go and find, okay, and then you you read the instructions, maybe you didn't understand some of the concepts, you know, what are you supposed to do? Now you can just watch it happen in real time. And whether or not you use that information, that's up to you. But if you really want to hone your craft, you have the ability to do it. And when the earlier you start doing it, the better you're going to be at it, you know, later on in life. Um, old school, Chris, I definitely have plenty of X leanings. I, I tend to think I do as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, boxing us in. I don't know. It's not really my thing. Um, dial up internet, picking up the phone and hearing that noise. Dude, 
Or, or you know what the worst was? Being on dial-up internet and then somebody in your house picks up the phone and, and breaks your connection while you're trying to download a three megabyte file that was going to take 25 minutes. Jeez. Remember that? Um, if anything, collaboration is so much more embraced now than before and I think the new generation benefits from that. Yeah, the new generation, they tend to... Um, accept things a lot more than our generation does or did. Um, remember when having a musical act in a, you know, commercial was a niche niche that was selling out. Um, now it's like, yo, I want my song in a commercial. Like, it just seems like that is the, that is the, the way to go now, you know, selling out quote unquote selling out was a big deal, you know, Oh, they're just sellouts. Oh, they're doing this and that now. They're 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 not they're not real anymore. And now it's like, yo, there there's merch on everything. Every, all the you know, there's merch for everything, and and it's and it's cool. And it's like, okay, well, you know, those guys they got they got to make revenue somehow. They're not selling CDs. Um. All right, this this has been this has been boomer talk with Bayzad. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this segment. Um, next week we'll be talking about. Uh, Cellular phones. What's up with that? I don't know. Um, anyways, well, let's, let's get into preview time. Uh, Boomer Talk's been fun, but maybe that's, uh, that's another, that's another live stream. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, selling out is basically not a thing anymore. I think it all, it'll, I think it'll come back though. I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think it's the norm. Um, Uh, I feel like Simpsons was the sea of change for selling out and maybe Rolling Stones and the Windows commercial. Admittedly, I discovered the Rolling Stones through that Windows commercial. People who don't know, so uh, for, for any of you non-boomers out there, when Windows 95 came out, it was... A big change in the computer landscape. Um, huge. That was, that was, it was, it was the biggest change in operating systems, I think, ever was Windows 95. And I was a very excited kid. You know, this was the future. Windows 95 for me was the future of the world. You'd see these commercials of like, you know, the internet and, you know, people coming, you know, the world kind of getting a little bit smaller and more connected. And, the start button was the big new feature of Windows 95. And then they had that, that, that Rolling Stones commercial and start me up. And, uh, and, uh, I thought it was a perfect, you know, pairing. Um, and, uh, as, as a, you know, little, you know, in, in, in that time, you know, having a computer in your home wasn't particularly common. And, um, it wasn't, you know, it was kind of, Still on the on the fringe nerd things, so um, I, I was an excited kid for the internet, very very excited uh, for that for all that stuff. Next week on Boomer Talk, which pair of New Balance goes best with your denim? I don't even own a single pair of New Balance sneakers. Um, yeah, but yeah, that we we should have Boomer Talk. Boomer Talk is a good a good topic. Um, maybe I should do a poll see how how old everybody is in here. Uh, maybe we're just, maybe this is just an echo chamber. We're not, we're not teaching the youngins anything. Um, I love New Balance. I like New Balance. I think they look great. I just don't own a pair. Um, yeah, I, uh, I just don't, I don't know why. I, I'm not opposed to it. I just, I've just never, I've never owned one. Um, made in UK New Balance. I think they also have made in USA New Balance as well. Okay. Let's take a look. That's a preview. So these are all fall, winter 21 styles. We'll start with the Elephant X. So this is the 10th iteration of the Elephant Denim. Here we have the Dark Indigo Warp, 19 ounces. So this is basically... The Elephant One, the jean that started it all, remastered, Indigo Warp, 
with a space gray weft. You might uh, you might see where I'm I'm theming some of the the names uh, 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 and details of this gene from. And then we have this uh, kind of chromed out salvage ID. It's got this kind of nice little shine to it. But yeah, exterior indigo, interior gray. Uh, we have these kind of, again, kind of uh, chromed out hardware. Now, what I think is going to be very, very special about this denim is that you've got this dark indigo warp that's paired up with this kind of darker weft. So when this gene fades, you're going to have a really beautiful high-low contrast where the indigo will fade to a very bright blue and then that dark warp will be the backdrop of it. So you'll have a nice kind of uh, brightness on top of darkness. These should fade quite magnificently. And for anybody who knows about the Elephant 1, the Elephant 2, these are, the Elephant 2 is just a slightly beefed up version of the Elephant 1. And the Elephant 2 is, has been the most popular uh, elephant of uh, I, I think uh, the most popular elephant that uh, we've put out in terms of, you know, demand, people asking for it. So if if you like the Elephant 1, the Elephant 2, this is going to be for you. Beautiful uh, dark indigo color, great weight at 19 ounces, veg tan leather patch, super thick as well. And uh, yeah, this is coming out this fall. This will be one of the earlier releases of the fall winter 22, sorry, fall winter 21 collection. Um we will have the uh, the full preview video guide up in a few weeks, and uh, as well as a uh, delivery schedule. Billy Black one thirty seven says, "I'm definitely excited for the Elephant X." Um, we had a couple of uh, people in here with their ages. Uh, Max Junior thirty two, Ryan from East Macon thirty one years old. L. Rich Tree, 39. Colin McCoats, 906, 39. The E, 54, 34. I'm 38 this year. So, yeah. It's, uh, we're, we're all in... We're, we seem to all be in the, a similar age range. At least we, we re remember the same things. Uh, if, if there are any uh, young people in here... We're all young. We're all young, guys. Don't worry. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, uh, if if uh, if anyone thinks we're just uh, old whiny boomers, let's hear about it. Twenty one years old, and I just got into raw denim. Never looking back. Thank you, riceroni macaroni. You've got uh, you are you're in it before most of us were in it. So you'll you'll have a lot more of your life dedicated to raw denim than uh, than we were. I'm an old fart then at sixty one. No way, man. You're you're. You're you're a part of all of us. 800 year old wizard. I'm getting there. I've got my wizard hair and my gray hair gr coming in real strong. In a few years, this is all gonna be gray, and uh, I'm gonna have long wizard gray hair. Um, 39 going on 40. Yeah, we're all look, man. We're we're all as old as we feel, and uh, you know we feel great wearing our jeans. I'll tell you that much. <clears throat> Next, we have the uh, oh man, I forgot the the. Uh, let me let me let me just I forgot the name of that one. I don't want to I want to I want to say the name properly. I don't want to I don't want to make a mistake. Let me go go double check. <clears throat> oh, how embarrassing! My memory is uh, starting to fade. Starting to fade already. It's just too many. There's too many genes in this brain of mine. Um, lot, lot, dot, lot, da. All right, I was, I was right. I just didn't want to be wrong. Um, all right, let's take a look at the next gene here. A little bit of cat fur on here. Don't mind that. We've got the Crimson Sky Selvage Dark Indigo Red Weft. So this is essentially the nightshade stretch selvage with a red weft interior. Our red wefts are always very popular and we wanted to do something in this super, like what I really love about the nightshade stretch selvage is just 
how dark it is. And, you know, usually when you have a denim that has a colored weft, you, you see it through the weft. Sorry, you see it through the warp. But on this denim, you notice you really don't see that red come through. It is very, very dark. And the reason for that is because there's an extra indigo coating on top of this indigo dyed denim. This, there's so much indigo in this fabric that it almost looks wet. And like, you, you, you kind of, you can see it here. It just, it just looks like it's dripping with indigo. So there's a lot of indigo to fade here. And then when you start to fade through it, that's when the red will start to show a little bit through those, uh, you know, uh, 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 uh twill lines. But when you flip the cuff, that's really when you'll show off that interior. We've got it paired up here with the uh, mil spec uh, dark uh, black non-reflective buttons. And uh, you can see here, the, the Selvage ID is really the, uh, really shows off that, that extra coating. So this is a white, red, white, but because there's that extra layer of indigo coating on top, it coats the white so that it looks a little bit more navy blue here. So um, there's that much more indigo on this denim than just dyeing the yarns. Yeah, inky colors. Yes, inky is, a, is, is, is definitely the right word for this denim. So this is the Crimson Sky Stretch Selvage made with 2% stretch. Um, 12 and a half ounce weight. So great weight for all year wear and, uh, no break in time for this denim. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna feel comfortable right away on these. Um, okay. Let's take a look at, <clears throat> I think this is gonna be a real big fan favorite. I've shown this off before, but it's been, a, it's been a while. This is the turmeric dyed selvage. Dark indigo warp, 100% cotton. You can see that the denim itself has got this great texture, a little bit fuzzy, right? And you can see that it's got this warm tone to it as well. If you look real close, you can see a little hint of like orangey yellow coming through. And that's because the inside is dyed with actual natural turmeric dye. So you got this nice warm toned denim paired up with this beautiful natural dyed interior. It's got the pink Selvage ID for a real vintage style look. These are gonna look beautiful with like red tone or brown toned boots. Very, very nice. I'm looking forward uh, to these dropping. I think these are gonna look great for those leather boot guys. Um, this is gonna be a real popular option for them. Spicy jeans, not quite, you know, you're not, you don't have to worry about that, but it does have uh, that beautiful spicy tone. Um, so this is coming out this fall. We've got it paired up with the uh, brown kind of copper hardware here. Very nice. And uh, you have that suede rough out leather patch here as well. A perfect pairing, I think. With, and you got the contrast stitching. So that is the turmeric dyed salvage another fall winter 21 release we will have the full schedule up soon um for uh for releases but uh like i was saying earlier the first releases will probably come uh mid late august and uh and we'll uh we'll have more uh information for all that soon as well as a full video so uh just pay attention to the social media we we, we tend to announce all that all that stuff so so that's preview time for today. I hope you enjoyed that. We we also showed off the knife earlier in this stream. If you're uh, if you're watching this, if you're just tuning in now, check it out on the replay. Um, we'll have the replay up on YouTube tomorrow, Sunday. So I'll I'll try to make sure that we have these uh, Instagram lives. Uh, up on our YouTube channel for Sunday mornings. Um, you know, I know so maybe you can watch them, uh, you know, when you wake up in the morning, uh, you know, just have it on in the background or whatever. You know, I know some people like to watch it that way. So we'll, uh, we'll do it like that. Uh, especially, you know, Sundays, people are home. Usually I put it up on Mondays, but I, I think Sundays might be a better day for that. Okay. Well, we've had, we've had, uh, we've had Q and A. We had boomer talk. We had, uh, some, some, co some COVID talk. We had previews. It's any fallen code samples yet? Not yet. It's coming. Um, they we just haven't received it yet. 
I was I was supposed to get some uh, spring summer twenty two samples. Yeah, I was hoping they would show up during this live stream, but uh, it, it did not happen. Waiting for FedEx, but um, I will definitely by next week you'll see some spring summer twenty two samples, um, and hopefully I'll have the following code matrix sample fabric here as well. So uh, just tune in as soon as I get stuff, and uh, I, I like to show it off. So uh, you know, well, uh, there's not there's not a lot of secrets here. Some secrets, but not a lot of secrets. Um, but let's move forward to the the segment of the show that we like to call snack time because we've got a couple of things this week. Um, I just, you know, I, I last two weeks I, uh, I I didn't have a uh, snack time, but we got uh, we got something this week. Thought these would be a lot of fun. And we're fully stocked also for uh, the next couple of snack times. Let me, let me just show you. We, we went shopping this week and my lovely sister sent me a care package from Canada. Which spent way too much money to get me these snacks, but I definitely appreciate it. Um, but uh, yeah, I got some, I got some North American snacks back here. Uh, I got some, uh, some Cheez-Its, hot and spicy. Double crunch ruffles. I've never seen this before. Jalapeno cheddar. This is uh, some, some Japanese snacks, some, some spicy snacks. Um, but, uh, you know, extra flaming hot. Sweet chili heat lays. Dorito flavored sweet chili heat lays. That's new. I've never saw that before. And a bunch of packies. So we got all the packies chips here. Um, and uh, you can't get these in Japan, so... I'm I'm just happy that I have a couple of bags of these in my inventory. Um, you know, if it wasn't for all this COVID stuff, we'd be going back to Canada every uh, every couple of weeks. So it wouldn't be hard to you know bring back this stuff with us every now and then. But just the way things are now, I'm I'm relying on the kindness of my sister to uh, to send me a few things here and there. Um, but yeah, it's it. Ooh, she spent way too much. She spent way too much money, but I love my sister. So thank you, sister out there, if you're watching. Packy's chips, they make fantastic chips. Um, <clears throat> they have the uh, the ghost pepper ones. They're they're pretty hot. Definitely not the hottest chip I've had, but they do make the one chip challenge, which I've never tried. I'm, I'm a little afraid of that, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we... Uh, well, next time we go to Canada, I want to order all those hot ones, hot sauces, so I can bring them back here. Although I can probably ship them here. Anyways, we'll do a couple of uh, hot and spicy taste tests on these on these live streams uh, at some point. But yeah, got all the chips I wanted. Got to got to wait for some special occasions to crack them open. So uh, I, it's that's the, that's the thing when you when you can't have all the stuff you want all the time, you got you got to wait um, a little bit. So uh, maybe uh, <clears throat> a little. Uh, We'll figure out when we have those. But <clears throat> today we've got some soda to try. Um, we found these at the uh, the grocery store. I thought they were pretty cool. Melon soda and watermelon soda. Now, Japan is very good for seasonal type products and right now it's like melon and watermelon season so you see a lot of melon and watermelon uh themed products like you, you're you not going to find this all year or i mean if you do it's it's not going to be stocked everywhere all year that's for sure um so yeah we're gonna uh, we're gonna try these out right risa yeah risa's here she's uh you know good morning risa all right, the last dab is no joke. I had the same bottle for years for the hot ones. I'm looking forward to it. I like making hot wings, and uh, yeah, the hot. I want to try. I want to go through the 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 hot ones levels of of, of of pain and destruction. I guess. So we'll see. Anyway, I got I got to order it. I got to order it. Let's try out the soda here. Um, what do you guys think? You you guys. Is that a house or a loft? It's uh, it's a, it's like a loft. It's got a loft what space. Is a loft? Huh? What is a loft? Loft is more of like an industrial looking space. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say yeah. So it's it's a lot more lofty than it is apartmenty. I mean, just yeah. by all the uh, 
bare walls that we have. It's not, you know. It's, it's, yeah, I like it. It's raw. It's like our jeans. Um, okay, let's... Uh, good morning, Risa. I hope I spelled it correctly. You did. A lot of, a lot of hellos to Risa over here. Oh. Um, okay, let's try out the soda here. Now, Risa doesn't like watermelon or, or melon. melon. She hates both of these flavors. So, uh... <laughs> Well, but there's this um, ice cream. We should have bought that too. Yeah. In Japan called Suika Bar, which means watermelon bar. And it's like a pop popsicle, icicle? Yeah, it's like a popsicle shaped in a, uh, like a, like slice, a slice of watermelon. watermelon. And then there's the green part and then there's red, you know, triangle. Yeah. And then it has seeds and seeds are chocolate, like brown chocolate yeah and then like those are like my favorite one of my favorite ice creams so. right so yeah risa never eats melons and uh well but, it, but she likes like it she likes it ice works. cream uh ice cream watermelon so this is the watermelon soda um uh, is there anything to it um no except that it has a thing for a children's form i hope these are not child labored soda okay Probably not. Maybe they support children. Children. They just support them. <laughs> yeah. That would be a weird advertising. Proudly made by children. But some, maybe that would be nice. Like if you had, you know, church group making cookies. All the kids made some cookies. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's got 41 calories per 100 milliliters. Okay. On the high side. It, does, it smells like candy watermelon. Okay, let's try Oh, it's super, yeah. Like if you've had like those gummies, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smells yeah, like yeah. like watermelon gummy candy. Yeah. Okay. I want that soda. Well, you gotta come to Japan, man. These will be out every every spring summer. It's gonna be very seasonal, I would imagine. Yeah, I like the bottle. The bottle is cool. That's what sold us on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Try first. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a quick little sippy sipperoo. Hmm. Okay. People say that there's no juice in it. Like, no fruit. That is 90% soda water flavor. 10% just kind of sweet. I don't know. I can't really pin it down. Doesn't have a... The smell of watermelon is a way higher than the taste of watermelon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely tastes exactly like what watermelon candy would taste like. It doesn't have a, like I wouldn't connect the dots. No, like, I wouldn't think it's a watermelon if I've never had a watermelon flavored like things. Yeah, you know what I mean. This is a tough one to connect the dot to. It's so it's. It's, it's like sometimes like banana flavored things. It's not really banana, but you register mm. as banana flavored thing in your head. Right. Yeah, that was okay. I mean, yeah, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad. It's just it's not as I don't know what I would have expected for a, a a watermelon soda. To be honest with you, I've never had a watermelon soda. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we have a we have we have a melon soda in Japan. I don't know about like the rest of the world. There's like five billion kinds of melon, like melons that look like this, and then inside is orange, and inside is white, and then it's green, and then there's like melons that doesn't have these veins, and you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just five bazillion. And you can also buy melons here for hundreds of dollars. Like, no joke, hundreds of dollars for these melons. It smells the same. It's a little bit sweeter, maybe. It smells way sweeter. Yeah. But it doesn't have the same, yeah. like... Like, I don't, I don't even smell anything on that one anymore. Same kind. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. This one's... <laughs> this is not like that. Uh, not like that. The sweetness here... Is higher. It sm this smells like one of those orange melons, like a cantaloupe. Mm. It's 
Yeah, the sweetness. Yeah, this one tastes more like a cantaloupe than the watermelon one tastes like a watermelon to me. This one I actually kind of like a little better because it's sweeter. Is it seedless? Yes, definitely seedless. Cube watermelons. There are cube watermelons in this country. Actually, vodka. Maybe. Maybe, actually. Might be. Yeah. I like the I like the 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 melon one more than the watermelon one. Really? Yeah. Mm. Um, tastes like sugar. It doesn't taste. They like both anything. taste like sugar. They don't. They're not very. They're not particularly amazing. Um, it's no Dr Pepper. Um, okay, we got to give these a score out of ten. Where where are you putting watermelon soda? Watermelon soda at. Uh, Mm, 6.1. Okay. 6.1. Okay. And then melon, melon soda? soda at 5.7. 5.7. Okay. I would do... I would do practically the opposite. I'm going to go 6.2 on the melon soda. And I'm going to agree with you at 5.7. No. Well, opposite. I said 6.2 on the melon soda. And I'm going to go 5.7 on the watermelon soda. Both are worth a try. This is okay. I mean, if you have nothing else, it's fine. It's not my first choice. It's not my fifth choice. Um, but if it's uh, as a curiosity, you drink it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just, they're both not disgusting. The only reason I went below six on this one is because it, I don't even get the, like, the flavor, like melon flavor. Or, yeah, but you, know you don't like I mean? melon flavor in general. That tastes like a cantaloupe. Yeah, but I don't taste it. I, I, I oh. don't like it. I should know what yeah. it tastes like, but I don't mm. find it. In here. Uh, it's okay. All right. I've seen a watermelon auction, $1,500 for a watermelon. Insane. Oh, yeah. Like, if you go to any luxury department store, the ground level is the food floor, and there's always, like, a fruit store that sells luxury fruit. And seeing a $300 watermelon would be pretty common. No problem. Like, if I wanted today to go and buy a $300 watermelon, no problem. I could do it. It's not even... It's, it's so common... To find that everyone in this country knows where to find one if they wanted to. And I think that's weird. I think it's weird that a $300 watermelon exists and that everybody knows about it. Yeah. I guess so. I think melon is, in, in general, it's a way more expensive fruit. So, watermelon, you can oh, yeah. buy it cheap at the grocery store. Melon <laughs> these days too, but like when you hear melon and mango in this country, it, oh, like, yeah. it's a expensive like, fruit. Ten dollar, twenty dollar mangoes are, yeah. You can you have even at the regular grocery store. Ten dollar mangoes is, is there, like yeah. Well, mangoes are in general are very expensive. Yeah, but I feel like the ones that they bring into this country are only like the A plus ones. Like they're well, like I, I had a friend. I had some people in Thailand tell me that like the best fruit that Thailand grows, like Thai people don't even get to have it oh, because yeah. it it all is for export for like Japan. That's for well, everything. Is. Yeah. Like best shrimps, best like Maybe. kind of thing. Yeah. I'm sure you can get it, but it's like I guess, you know, just uh Yeah. Most of it is, is for export. Yeah. Anyways, it's a very very interesting world. If uh, if you come to Japan, definitely go and check out when when cuz you will you eventually you will end up in a high-end department store and you'll end up in the food the food floor. You'll you'll be surprised. You'll be shocked sometimes with what they have there. Like two hundred dollar cherries. We bought the uh, we bought the, the the expensive strawberries. We we bought the white strawberries. Uh, yeah, you know, a couple of months ago for the live stream. <laughs> we 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 specifically went to the expensive fruit store to go buy some white strawberries. We didn't buy the most expensive ones. Some of the most expensive white strawberries are ten dollars a pop. I think we paid like ten dollars for uh, a pack of five or something like that. So uh, they were small, you know, but if you buy the $10 one, it's like, it's a pretty big, robust looking strawberry. Uh, what makes them so expensive? I don't know. I really don't. I mean, 
I'm sure there's it's like they, there's a grading to it, like you know the the way that the skin is and the way that the you know the wavy patterns on the skin uh, and they are. Put a lot of effort into it. Like I know that, like you know, with like uh, apples or cherries or strawberries, that, that things that turns red. Yeah. Oh, like. there's a particular shade of red and how uniform the red is across yeah, the so entire fruit. Obviously, if you're hanging a, a, a you're not hanging them, but like mm -hmm. if uh, apples are hanging on the tree. Yeah. Like the sun is hit, and then like this side of the apple, you might not get the sun at all. Yeah. So you have to make sure that they, they turn. Yeah. Each one of them. They turn the apples, and they cut off like the leaves around them to yeah. make sure that the. So it's a lot of work, and then you also kind of have to like get rid of like imperfect ones for much less price. Yeah. Even if you know it tastes the same, so it's like that that cost of the perfect one goes up. There. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is you know. Whatever. Yeah, I've seen I've seen like TV shows where they show like the apple grower and yeah, he just cuts off all the leaves around the apple so that like the tree isn't wasting energy like you know in the leaves and all the I guess nutrients are going into the to the apple and they're making sure that it's uniformly red all around. It's a, it's crazy. I mean, the fact that there's a, a market for it and people are just like, "No, no. I want the perfect apple. The one that isn't uniformly red all around. That's for the plebes." Um, we don't eat those apples. In our household, we only eat $15 no, apples. Eat those expensive fruits at all. They forget. Oh, there's, right. They, they are mostly for gifts. That's yeah. true. There's, I mean, I'm sure there's like 1%. Yeah, there are, there are some very fancy people who yeah. just shop at those places. And they're like, why would I buy fruit anywhere else? <laughs> I wonder what it's like to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> the the because every store it doesn't matter what it is there's always a regular right and those those fruit stores at the luxury department store they must have regulars there must be some like old ladies who are just there every week they're like okay i'm here to buy fruit for my husband and my family and whatever like oh what's the bill four hundred dollars yeah okay <laughs> no problem chump change <laughs> It must, I would love to work at that fruit store for a day just to see what goes on there. <laughs> Craziness. Craziness. What apples am I talking about? Luxury department store. Japanese luxury department store fruit stand apples. Not a, it's not a regular fruit stand. They are, they're crazy. You look it up on YouTube. You'll see it. But yeah, you can buy the most expensive fruit you've ever seen in your life in this country. Um, and they're com it's common also. Um, had to go to dinner. Did you say anything about the 40 ounce? I did not. I'll have an update next week. Um, okay. Uh, oh, geez. Such fanatics, enthusiastic in everything. We, we do get excited pretty easily. Um, Bayzad, I understand that all the naked and famous denim products were created by you two and Brandon. While you're both here, what's the most exciting story? Uh, what is your, your guys' most exciting story when coming up with an idea? What's the most exciting story coming up with a new idea? I don't know. Okay. Exciting story. That's that's a tough one. You know what? Save that question for next week, um, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll try to think of some exciting stories of coming up with ideas for products. Um, sometimes they just hit us, you know. Yeah, most of the time it's very like non. It's not. It's not so exciting. It's just like, oh, that would be cool. The only thing we have a story for is that coffee. The died. coffee died where it was an accident. Yeah. But but everything else is just like... We'll have to think about it. There's got to be something where we're just like, holy shit. All right. Okay. okay, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. I will see you guys next week. We'll... Uh, same, same denim time, same denim channel. And uh, as a, a final thought here, you know... The world is something or other, and uh, be nice to one another. I don't know. I'm still working on it. Uh, that answered my question perfectly. Ha, ha, ha. I wanted to know, uh, how do you guys do what you do? Magicians, love you guys. Love you guys even more. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Be kind and, and nice to one another. Wear your jeans real hard. Jerry, I know. I got to watch. I, you know, every time I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a Jerry Springer-ish final thought, I, I'm, I'm just not as good as the man. He's the man. And... Uh, that's why he's Jerry, and that's why I'm based at. So we will see you guys next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, that's that. See ya.